morning good evening whichever time it is for you this is sunday school praise the lord it's sunday school this is the sunday school lesson for june 28th 2020 and we're in the book of proverbs chapter 9 verses 1 through 18. our topic is wisdom's feast invitation to wisdom let's go into a word of prayer father god in the name of jesus we ask you to bless this lesson and guide us and lead us let those persons who are listening understand it and get something from it. We thank you, Jesus, for this time in our lives, and we will continue to give you the honor and the praise. Amen. Okay, let's begin. I hope you got your Bible or your Sunday school book or whatever. We're in Proverbs 9, and here's the way we're going to work it. There'll be just three basic outlines. It's talking about wisdom's invitation to the banquet, Chapter 9, 1 to 6 is talking about the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, Proverbs 9, 8 through 10. And I hope you can see the board the best you can. And then we're going to talk about Father's invitation to the banquet, Proverbs 9, 13 through 18. And then we'll have a summary. Near the latter part of the lesson, we're going to, near the summary, we're going to look at these scriptures, 2 Timothy 4, 3 through 4. We're going to look at Psalm 141, verse 5. This is near the end. And there will be at least two applications, but many more. So, let's begin. You got yourselves together, and we begin. We begin with a, a, a brief introduction. I'd like to introduce to you Lady Wisdom and Lady Folly. These are two competing voices that's calling us the life's journey. Lady Wisdom, Lady Folly. And so why would you need this call from both of them? You don't need it from Lady Folly. You really need it from Lady Wisdom. And don't forget that wisdom gives us instruction to the wise, yet the foolish suffer their own downfall. So by the end of the lesson, we hope you will be able to compare Lady Wisdom with Lady Folly as they invite you to a feast, a feast called a banquet. We hope that you will have the desire to walk the path of Lady Wisdom and avoid the perils of Lady Folly. And finally, most important, we hope that this lesson will help you to grow in the fear of the Lord, which is the first step in walking the way of wisdom. The book of Proverbs was written, most of them, about 3,000 Proverbs, was written by Solomon, and two or three others read, wrote some of the other ones. But I want you to know that chapter 9, it is chapter 9 that talks about verses 1 through 8, that we have uh, chapters 1 through 8. And then in chapter 9, it's sort of what, uh, uh, putting it together. So what is wisdom? Once more, talked about it last Sunday, still talking about it. And I have here a definition that might will help you, because wisdom is loaded. It is knowledge. It is understanding, it is discretion, it is obedience, and it's instruction. But here's the key, this is godly wisdom. So everything about knowledge, understanding, discretion, obedience, and instruction must be based on the word of God, and you must give reverence to God. And then you ask, well, what is folly? Well, it's everything else that contradicts wisdom, as simple as that. So both of these women are gonna host a lavish banquet, but the outcome for the invitees are different. Each woman is eager to attract her guests. We learn from these two, these two women that it is better to pay attention to lady wisdom than the teaching of lady folly. Okay? Now, Lady Wisdom is having a problem here, but that's okay. Amen. All right, let's begin. You got that Bible? We're going to read, since it's so many verses, we're going to read verses 1 through 6, then 8 through 10, and then 13 uh, through 18. We're going to also be looking at some of the in-between verses, just as for continuity. So, praise the Lord for his word. I am going to be reading it first, 
in the King James Version. And this is what it says. Listen closely. The banquet has started and Lady Wisdom is getting people to come to her banquet. And this is what she said. This is what the Word of God says. Wisdom has built her house. She has horn out her seven pillows. She has killed her beasts. She has mingled her wine. She has also furnished her table. She has sent forth her maidens, and she cries out upon the highest places of the city. This is what she cries out. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. As for him that wanted understanding, she said to him. And I'm going to stop on uh, verses 1 through 3 and go back and discuss those verses before we get too far. This is what Lady Wisdom is saying in verses 1, 2, 3. Lady Wisdom invites all to a lavish banquet. She has built this house with the grace of God. That's very important. She has seven pillows. These seven pillows represent completeness, an ideal perfect house. She is very, a very industrious woman. She's a very attractive woman. Her house is so much better than Lady what? Folly. She now sends her maidens, who are they? They are her servants, out for people to come to the feast. Come to the feast. Now, don't forget, when the maidens go out, anyone can come. The wealthy, anybody. No special qualification. This means that no high level of knowledge is necessary to attend her banquet. That was another part of the verse that says, verse 2, she has mingled her wine. And that simply means, possibly, that she has watered it down. She has watered it down. Well, for maybe to make sure there's no drunkenness or to make it last what, longer. Now, let me go to verses 4, 5, and 6. And this is what she says. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. As for him that wanteth understanding, she said to him, Come. Eat of my bread and drink of the wine, which again I have what mingled. Six, forsake the foolish and live and go in the way of understanding. These verses are not that difficult, I don't think, but here's the way that I look at it. She calls out to those who are simple, which means naive, imprudent. Imprudent means not cautious to those who are inexperienced. And the key question right now is why is Lady Wisdom calling out to those who are simple? And listen to this, because they are the ones who are subject to the seduction of the foolish woman who is Lady Polly. That's very important now. She tells the simple ones to leave behind your foolishness and begins to live and learn how to be wise. Lady Wisdom is looking for those who are hungry for wisdom, those who are humble enough to seek it. She has a lot to offer, and she wants to do it. She's eager to do it. And that brings me up to application number one. And I put on the board, seek wisdom. And it's not just for those who are simple. Some of us need to stay hungry for the wisdom and be humbly enough to seek it out. That's a person that does not think he's simple, but he is. And so that's a lot of us. We all need to get it together and we don't ever, we need to seek God's advice and receive it from the word of God. Amen. So I hope you got that. Part one of the lesson, which is an introduction to Lady what? Wisdom. Now we continue, and now we're going to look at Proverbs 9, 8 through 10. I will read 7, 2 uh, for emphasis. And I'm still in the King James Version, <clears throat> and I'm on number 7. I'm with you. Are you with me? Thank God if you're with me. Thank God, and if I've lost you, I give you a chance to whoever you are to get with me. And this is what verse seven says. 
He that reproveth a scorner giveth to himself shame, and he that rebuketh a wicked man getteth himself a block. Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, <clears throat> and he will increase in learning. Okay, let's look at verses 7 and 8 together. And I'm reading them now from the Living Bible. If you rebuke a mocker, you will only get a smart retort. Yes, he will snare at you, so don't bother with him. He will only hate you for trying to help him. But a wise man, when he is rebuked, will love you all the more. Verse 9, teach a wise man, and he will be wiser. Teach a good man, and he will learn more. Do you get what those verses are saying? He, he, he mentions that do not worry about correcting a scorner. You know what? He's going to hate you. But rebuke a wise man, and he will love you. Give instructions to a wise man, and he will be wiser, as the first said. Teach a just man, and he will increase. So <clears throat> if you're like me, you read those verses and you say, what in the world are they trying to tell me to do? Well, first thing, you need to know that a, a scoffer is a proud and hardened beyond reproof. What he does, what a scoffer does, he mocks wisdom. Don't come here with all that stuff telling me what to do. But if you were to teach a person that wants to be taught, a person who is wise, it is better to teach the wise who will love the truth you give them. Now, the wise isn't great. He don't know everything. The wise person is characterized by a willingness to endure rebuke. That means you are wise enough to know that you need help. That, that's simple. A scorner, he might know he needs help, but he don't want it. I can give you lots of reasons. But if when you rebuke a marker, you will only get a smart answer. Yes, he'll snare at you, so don't bother with him. Go ahead. What, what we are saying here, uh, Solomon is saying here, in, in my estimation, he's saying that you, uh, you and your witnessing, or you who are trying to help people, you're going to come across the scoffer. You're going to come across him. And you're going to have to kind of pass him by. Of course, eventually, we hope he will be wise enough to come back. So don't bother him. He only hates you for trying to help him. But a wise man, you, you will rebuke him and tell him he's not doing well. And if he's wise enough to understand it, we'll love you all the more. I hope you got that. Now, it is verse 10 that makes it clear. And in the King James Version, it says, verse 10, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. In the Living Bible, it says, For the reference and fear of God are basic to all understanding of wisdom. Uh, the, the, the scoffer, he don't fear anything. He don't fear God, he don't fear anything. And so the key is knowing God results in every other kind of understanding. And I hope that you will now know why the second part of our lesson is called the fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? Wisdom. Fear means you must realize, and to me, I got it when I read this in our Sunday school book. Fear means you must realize that you are under another's power. The power is God. If you have a positive attitude with that authority figure, you recognize him in awe. The fear of God overcomes the evil of what the scoffer has of pride and cynicism, which are traits of a foolish person. They are, they, they are so into themselves until they can even be in awe of God to receive wisdom so that they can live eventually a better life. So the wisdom begins with the fear of the Holy One. And that brings me to application number two. 
wisdom happens. And this, this to me is the key to it. Wisdom happens when we realize that the way to deal with life, this is life now, in general, reveals whether we revel God or not. If you don't revel God or not, you can't fear him. You, you have to make sure that you are willing to accept God's answer. You must be willing to be submission to God, which is the first step toward a wise life. Okay? Hope you got that. Pausing for a moment. What have we done so far? We've looked at Lady Wisdom. We've looked at the understanding of why she's so wise. We looked at the characteristics of Lady Wisdom. And then we started talking about these scoffers. So what we did is we let you know there's a difference between a person who wants to be to receive wisdom and a person who will re don't want your rebuke. Hope that makes sense. In Proverbs chapter 9, verses 11 and 12, it says, and I'm going to read it from the King James Version, for by me thy days shall be multiplied, talking about wisdom, and the years of thy life shall be increased. So if you go along with my concept, Lady Wisdom, it says, you, your days will be multiplied, and your years of life will be increased. And verse 12 says, if thou be wise, thou shalt be wise for thyself. But if thou scornest, thou alone shall bear it. You, you can be the scorner, but you're going to bear the way you, you react to people who are trying to give you some wise wisdom. And the people that give you wise wisdom, let's make this clear, are people who are in the Word of God. And if you continue to study the Word of God, you too will become wise and pass it on. And finally, if you're still with me, we're in the <clears throat> last part of the lesson. And of course, what we're doing in the lesson, don't forget our objectives, what we're really doing, we're doing a comparison of Lady Folly and who? Lady Wisdom. All right, let's continue. I'm going to read with you uh, verses 13 to 18, but I'm going to read them one by one for a reason. Because now we're getting ready to go to Lady Folly's banquet. Now, Lady Wisdom gave the banquet and she invited the what? The simple. But let me tell you something. Lady Folly is out there too, and she's going to be competing with Lady Wisdom to invite them. So you see, that's about life. Life is out there. And everybody is competing for you so that they can carry you in their own way. And I'm here to tell you that Lady Wisdom is the one that I want you to um, follow. So I read to you verse 13. A foolish woman is glamorous. She is simple and knoweth nothing. An introduction to Lady Wisdom. Now, let's, Lady Folly, sorry. She is glamorous. She is simple. She don't know anything. She's just the opposite of Lady Wisdom. She's loud, brash, never has enough lust and shame. That's what the Living Bible says. The Living Bible also says it this way. A prostitute is loud and brash and never has enough of lust and shame. That's the first introduction of Lady Father. Verses 14, and I will put 15 with it because of the way they stated. it. And it says, for she, this, this, this is Lady Folly now. Listen, for she sitteth at the door of her house on a seat in the high places of the what? City. And as she sits there, she calls out to passengers. Some go right on their way, but she's still calling them what? Out. So here's what she's doing. Who? Lady Father. She invites people to her banquet. She sits at the door of her house as high as she can so she can make sure she gets these people. She has a house, not like I told you that it had been, not like Lady Wisdom, not by the grace of God. We don't really know how she got that house. She has a house. She invites people to come. She, ha she doesn't have any maidens to go out and get the people to call them witnesses. 
that lady wisdom does, I'll tell you what she does. She just stands in the street and she will proclaim her, her mission. She has a few seductive words to get them to come in and some of them walk in the path of right and she tries to turn them aside. Don't go over there, lady wisdom. Come on over here. I got something to tell you. I got something to give you. I got, I got a wise, I got a great bandicrat here. Come on over here. Okay? And verses 16 and 17 verifies what I'm saying. And this is where it says in verse 16, Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. And as far as him that wanteth understanding, she said to them, I have stolen water, my stolen water, the sweet, and bread eaten is in a secret, it's pleasant. Well, what is she trying to do? Well, she says, come home with me. She says, listen to this, to the simple. The same simple people that Lady Wisdom was, get, was trying to get, she goes for them too. That's what. The word said. And then she said she has stolen melons and stolen food. Obviously, Lady Folly is not what, working. She addressed the simple because they are inexperienced, undecided, and she can easily entice them. And finally, in verse 18, and, and, and to me, this to, again, an epiphany. But these people that she's trying to get, they don't realize that her former guests are now citizens of the hell, of hell. Or the people who came to her banquet do not realize enjoying Lady Folly's feast will lead them to a place of destruction. As the people would say, I rest my case. I rest my case. Now, just in case I didn't get it over on Lady Wisdom and Lady Folly, who would not stand up, here's what I got from the lesson. I got that wisdom and folly is representing life. We all are human beings where Lady Wisdom and Lady Folly are always trying to get us. And I'm going to tell you right now, just because you've been reading the Bible for 50 or 60 years, Lady Folly and Lady Wisdom are still after you. That, 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 that's why they, the, the Lady Folly is so different from Lady Wisdom. The ultimate choice lies with us, which call, we will, which call will we answer? Whose invitation will we go and respond to? And to whom we would go and enjoy life and eat. Or will it be Lady Folly, Lady Wisdom, or Lady Folly? And then here's something to us who are out witnessing. We, we aren't as wise as we think, but we are wise enough to help someone else. As we go on this journey, those of us who have received Jesus Christ in our lives, scoffers, can be so hardened in their ways and choice that when we go to them, they will rebuke us. They will take you as in 2 Timothy 4, 3 through 4, says it this way. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine, wisdom. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around a great number of teachers, Lady Folly, to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their eyes away from the truth and they will, whatever Lady Folly says, they will believe. And the next thing, the wise. The wise are so open to wisdom's message that wisdom will rebuke her, but it says they will still listen to her because they have gotten their minds straight that Lady Wisdom represents God Almighty. It says in Psalm 141, verse 5, you might like to go there, 141, verse 5, and I put that on the board, 
it says, and I'll read it in the King James Version. Let the righteous spite me, it shall be a kindness, and let him reprove me, it shall be excellent oil, which shall not break my head, for yet my prayer also shall be in their calamity. Everyday language. Let the godly spite me, meaning, let people tell me about wisdom. It will be a kindness, and if they reprove me, it'll be medicine. Don't let me refuse it. Don't let me, who is trying to live a righteous life, refuse it. But I am in constant prayer against the wicked and their what, needs. So I hope that that makes sense. And finally, just a couple of more points here. Behind wisdom's invitation, wisdom's invitation is Almighty God. So we say yes to wisdom and be reverent to God. So to heed the call of folly is to forsake the land of the living and join the company of the dead, those that will send you to destruction. And again, the fear and knowledge of the Lord will guide us down the path of a wise life. And I'd like to say, wisdom is calling. Will you answer? If you are not a believer in Jesus Christ, will you accept him? Will you believe in him? And will you confess your, your sin? And if you already accepted Jesus Christ, then here's another thing. Learn to grow in wisdom. Share with others what you've learned. And honestly, in, in, in my understanding, I hope that all of us will become students of Lady Wisdom. Let us pray. Father God, I ask you this evening or this morning or the day that anyone is listening to bless those who have heard about the wisdom of God and the one that is against God. We ask you to uh, bless this lesson that we have said. Continue to bless thy servant that we, I will be able to continue to state what thus says the Lord. We ask you to bless those in our countries, in our states, in our cities, to be able to understand that the pandemic won't last forever. God is still in charge. God is still in charge. We ask you to bless all the persons in the government, all the local and even the federal, to guide us into a right way so that we all one day will return to our specific churches God bless you. Have a great day. Amen.